Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum and very good morning ladies and gentlemen. I'm Ahmad Badri Muhammad Zahir, the chairman of the board of directors of the RHB Bank and on behalf of the board I welcome all of you to the 56th annual general meeting of the RHB Bank. This is a virtual AGM held live from the broadcast venue at the meeting room 3 of the RHB Center. This year's AGM is convened in a virtual manner to continue to safeguard the well-being of members, directors and employees of the company due to the COVID-19 pandemic that is still affecting all of us, a bit we are already moving towards the endemic stage. The convening of this virtual meeting is in compliance with the Section 327 of the Companies Act 2016, which stipulates that the chairman shall be at the main venue of the AGM and also in accordance with the Clause 50 of the Companies Constitution, which allowed the AGM to be held at more than one venue using any instantaneous telecommunication devices that allow members to participate in the meeting. This virtual meeting is also convinced in accordance with the Security Commission Malaysia guidance and frequently asked questions on the conduct of the general meeting for listed issuer. So before we proceed any further, I now call upon the company secretary to confirm whether we have a quorum to proceed with today's meeting. Thank you, Yabragia Tansi Chairman. Uh, Tansi Chairman, Directors, Members of RHB Bank, I'm pleased to inform the meeting that uh, based on the registration data given by our share registrar, boardroom share registrars, uh, as at 9.52 a.m. today, we have uh, about 195 uh, members and or proxies for a total of 2.242 billion shares uh, who have registered through the remote participation and electronic voting facilities for today's uh, AGM. Hence, pursuant to Clause 56 of the company's constitution, two members present in person or by proxy or corporate representative shall constitute a quorum for the general meeting. Therefore, I'm pleased to confirm that we have a quorum to proceed with today's uh, EGM Tansri. Thank you, uh, Azman. As the company secretary has confirmed that we have the requisite quorum, I therefore declare the meeting duly constituted. Due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and the need to ensure compliance with the social distancing requirements, we have limited the numbers of persons present at the broadcast venue to essential individuals only. And here at the broadcast venue, on my right is Encik Muhammad Rashid Muhammad, the Group Managing Director of the RHB Banking Group. And on my left is the Group Company Secretary, Encik Azman Shah Ma'yaman. We have the remaining, the remaining directors participating remotely for this meeting. And they are Yang Berbahagia Tan Sri Rebecca Fatima Stamaria, the Senior Independent Non-Executive Director, Yang Berbahagia Tan Sri Ong Liang Huat alias Wong Ju Hua, Miss Ong Aileen, Mr. Lim Chen Tek, Puan Sharifatul Laila Said Ali, Yang berbahagia Datuk Muhammad Nasir Abdul Latif, Mr. Donald Jajwa Jagannathan, and Yang berbahagia Datuk Ian John Lowe. You may see them on the screen of the live webcast. Also present at this broadcast venue are the representative from our share registrar, pool administrator, boardroom share registrar, and our scrutinist, Mrs. KPMG PLT. Our external auditor, Mrs. Pricewaterhouse Cooper PLT, are attending the AGM virtually. Shareholders and proxies are invited to ask questions at any time during this meeting by submitting a written question via the messaging window facility as provided by the virtual meeting portal. All questions relating to 
other administrative matters such as requests for the annual report will be addressed by the team via the portal. The board will address questions related to group performance, business and outlook during the question and answer session later during this meeting. Dear shareholders, before I proceed any further, on behalf of the board, I would like to take this opportunity to record the board's and all RHBN's deepest gratitude and appreciation to Yang Berbahagia Datuk Karusaleh Ramli, the former group MD of the company who had left the group effective 25 March 2022, following eight years of service since he joined the group in 2013. He steered the group with discipline and commitment, and over the course of his tenure, the group has achieved many significant milestones while generating solid return for our shareholders. The board and management recognize his contribution to the company over the past years and wish him all the best in his journey ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, the notice of the 56 AGM dated 30th, 30th March 2020, 2022 was circulated to you over and above the required statutory notice period in line with the government best practice. And I'm sure that you all have read the notice and with your permission, I shall take the notice as right. Ladies and gentlemen, pursuant to paragraph 8.29A of the main market listing requirement of Bursa Malaysia Security Berhad, RHB Bank Berhad, being a listed issuer, must ensure that the voting of each resolution set out in the notice for this meeting are conducted by way of electronic pooling. In this regard, I would like to exercise my right as the chairman of the meeting to demand for a pool in accordance with the Clause 16 of the company's constitution in respect of all resolution which will be put to vote at this meeting. The company has appointed boardroom share registrar as the pool administrator to conduct the voting by way of e-pooling and Mrs. KPMG PLT as scrutinous to verify and validate the pool result. Next, a video presentation of the e-pooling process shall be played for your benefit. Dear shareholders, Thank you for your participation at today's virtual meeting. On this virtual meeting platform, you will be able to view the live broadcast of the meeting proceedings, pose questions to the board of directors, and submit your votes in real time while the meeting is in progress. To view the live broadcast of the meeting, please click this broadcast icon. If you are participating in this meeting via a laptop or desktop, the live broadcast panel can be viewed side by side with a voting panel. To maximize the broadcast panel, please click here. Audio of the live broadcast will continue to play in the background, even during the voting process or when the broadcast panel is being minimized. Do adjust the volume control on your device for optimum audio output. Please click this arrow to return to the main meeting screen. You can minimize the broadcast panel by clicking this broadcast icon again. Should you encounter any issues with the broadcast view, please refresh the page by clicking this refresh icon. If you have any questions for the board of directors, you may raise them at any time before or during the meeting. To do so, please click on this messaging icon. Type your question within the chat box and click on this arrow to submit your question. A message will appear that your question has been received. To return to the main meeting screen, click on this icon. To view the resolutions for this meeting and submit your votes, please click on this voting icon. Once the voting has opened, the resolutions and voting options will be displayed. To vote, please select one of the available options, for or against. A confirmation message will appear to indicate that your vote has been received. To change your vote, please click on the other option. A confirmation message will appear to indicate that your new voting direction has been received. If you wish to cancel your vote, 
please click on Cancel. You may change your voting direction at any time before the chairman closes the voting session. Once the chairman announces that the voting session is closed, you will not be able to change your voting direction anymore. You may click on the broadcast icon to return to the live broadcast screen for the announcement of voting results. Should you require any assistance during the virtual meeting, please call Boardroom's Help Desk at 603-7890-4700 or email us at bsr.helpdesk at boardroomlimited.com. Thank you and have a pleasant day. Ladies and gentlemen, the voting session is now open. Members may start registering their vote electronically until the conclusion of such session, which will be announced later. Before I proceed with the agenda of the day, I call upon the group MD, Encik Muhammad Rashid Muhammad, to give a presentation on the financial performance highlight of the group. Thank you so much, uh, Yang Berbahagia Tan Sri Chairman. Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. Uh, today marks my first uh, AGM for the group. Uh, as as you, are, you all know that I'm new uh, GMD uh, appointed uh, from 1st April this year. I'm, I'm very honoured uh, actually to be able to meet uh, all of you today, although it's virtually and hopefully that uh, next year we can do, do this meeting physically. And I'm, I'm also pleased uh, to share with you our performance uh, for financial year 2021. Right, uh, if I may, I uh, would like to just uh, give you a key highlight. How have we performed uh, the last uh, financial year? Uh, from a net profit perspective, a uh, bank uh, made $2.62 billion. Uh, that net profit grew by 28.8% compared to year before. Uh, this, is, this enabled us to create value for our stakeholders. Our ROE stood at 9.6%. Uh, we maintained uh, sound fundamental, a strong capital and liquidity level, asset quality on an improving trend, and uh, we showed lower GIL and also uh, credit charge ratios. Uh, for uh, financial year 2021, Dividend amounts to 40 cents per share. Uh, this, this is the highest ever payout ratio of 62.9%. Uh, on the ESG, uh, we continue to strengthen our practices uh, into our business and operation. Uh, what we have done, I think we have enhanced our risk management policies. We also have established group climate action program to align to, to the BNM climate, climate change and principle-based taxonomy. We maintain uh, employee engagement uh, and enhance uh, customer satisfaction. I think a uh, testament to that, I think our employee engagement survey, we call it EES, a score stood at 90% at par with the industry, though that is slightly lower than what we have seen in 2020. Our net promoters cost higher uh, at uh, plus 15 in, in 2021 as compared to plus 13 in 2020. Let me bring you and give you more details of how uh, the performance is uh, uh, in 2021. I think uh, we delivered a resilient uh, 2021 performance. Uh, this mainly supported by higher net fund based income and lower modification loss and expected credit losses. So on, on total income, uh, improvement, in, uh, improvement on income, you can see that total income uh, of, of the group uh, grew by 8.4% uh, from 7.9 billion to 7.79 uh, billion. Our net fund-based income increased by 11.5% from 5.27 billion to 5.87 billion. Our, we saw a dip in non-fund-based uh, income uh, that, that uh, we, show, we, show a re, uh, we show a reduction of 7.6% from 2.34 billion in 2020 to uh, 2.16 billion in 2021. I will go into detail as to what caused the, the, the reduction on the, our non-fund-based income shortly. Our modification loss, I mean, as uh, all of you are aware, 
I think we, we book a modification loss of 420 million uh, in 2020. So in 2021, I think our modification loss came down by 41.4% to uh, 240 million. We provide better returns to shareholders. I think from uh, operating expenses, uh, operating expenses grew 4% from 3.39 billion to 3.52 billion. But a point to note here, I think in 2020, 2019, I think our cost to income sorry, our operating expenses also stood at 3.39 billion. So there was no incremental from 2019 to 2020. So I would say that the 4% that that's reflected here is, is over the period of two years. Our operating profit before allowances increased by 12.3% from 3.8 to 4.27 billion. Our allowance, allowance for credit loss, cat credit losses on financial asset uh, reduced uh, by 35.6 percent from 1.15 to 0.74 billion. That's bring our that's bring to our net profit to shareholders, as I alluded earlier, uh, an increase of 28.8 percent from 2.03 to 2.62 billion in 2021. This is where uh, uh, on our uh, net fund based income, I think our net fund based income uh, were, was supported mainly and the increment is, was supported mainly by us proactively managing our funding management, uh, funding cost management. And I think we also see our name strengthened by eight basis points uh, from 2.06% uh, uh, in 2020. 20 to 2.14 percent in 2021. So what caused that? I mean, um, uh, fund-based income uh, reduced a bit from 10.16 to 9.59. Uh, however, uh, our fund-based expense uh, also reduced uh, from 4.89 billion to 3.72 billion. That brings our a uh, net fund-based income increased by 11.5% from 5.27 to 5.87 billion in 2021. This is the uh, non-fund-based income. I think our overall non-fund-based income dipped uh, by 7.6%. This is mainly due to lower net trading and investment income. Uh, however, I think uh, it's also uh, a point to note that our customers fee-related income grew by 3.7% year-on-year. So you can see in, in totality, uh, the non-fund-based non -fund -based income reduced by 7.6%. Uh, where is it uh, mainly contributed from? Uh, our total fee income still increased by 8.1%. Uh, Treasury-related income reduced by 31.0%. And uh, insurance underwriting surplus increased by 8.8%, and other income also reduced by 16.4%. If you look at the uh, detail uh, on the right side of the presentation, our, our, although our income increased by 8.1%, uh, what contributed mainly to the reduction or dip in our non-fund-based uh, income is our brokerage income. We saw a reduction of 14.4%. I think this typically uh, reflected uh, how markets uh, were doing in the year before, in 2020, and compared to 2021. Uh, capital market fee still in, uh, showing a positive uh, trajectory. I think we have uh, uh, we increased by 67.6%. Asset management also increased by 17.6%, and com commercial banking fees also increased by 13.1%. Treasury income, as I mentioned earlier, reduced by 31%. Uh, this is mainly uh, due to uh, reduction in gain on a realized gain and mark to market of our securities portfolio, which reduced by 34.8% as compared to 2020. I mean, you saw in 2020, uh, Bank Negara reduced the OPR rate, uh, so that uh, have a positive impact to our bond portfolio, and we don't see a repeat, uh, a repeat of uh, interest rate reduction in 2021. So percentage of total income, you can see that uh, from 2020, we were at 31% uh, on non-fund-based income and 69 net fund-based. Uh, comparatively, uh, last year, 2021, we had 27% uh, non-fund-based income and 73% on net fund-based income. 
on cost management, uh, this is uh, also what I've mentioned earlier. I think from uh, uh, cost perspective, I think from 2020 to 2021, we saw an increase of 4%, uh, but from 2019 to 2020, we did not see any increase in our cost. So our cost stays at around 3.3 billion. So what contributed to the cost, uh, per personal cost, of course, increased uh, by 4.7% from 2 billion to 2.1 billion. Our establishment costs increased from uh, 7 747 million to 773 million, uh, increased by 3.5%. Marketing, admin, and general expenses uh, collectively also increased. Uh, uh, from 300, uh, 240, 357 million to 240 to 240, 371 million, increased by 0.4% and 3.9% respectively. Our loan uh, grew uh, by 6.7% last year. I think this, this led by our mortgage, auto finance, SMB, commercial, and also Singapore. Our portfolio rebalancing improved with higher retail and SMB composition. I think we saw in 2017, if you can see that, we were at 59% uh, composition of our retail SME loan, but as at uh, December 2021, our retail and SME loan composition has increased to 63%. This is uh, intended. I think we want to rebalance our portfolio to grow more asset uh, on the retail and SME space. And uh, uh, we can, uh, you can see that uh, from the uh, community banking, uh, where the growth are mainly coming from, uh, mortgages by 8.1% and SME by 11.2%. We also grew 22%, uh, uh, though that the base is uh, small, but I think the, the percentage-wise, I think we grew from uh, 20 to 24 billion in our international business year on year. Our total deposit uh, grew by 7.5% uh, year on year, led by FD and CASA, uh, uh, of which both grew by 8.8% and 4.5% respectively. Our CASA ratio remained healthy at 30% over our total deposit. Just to give you a bit of more uh, detail of our uh, deposit composition, you can see that our customer deposit, fixed deposit increased uh, from 140 to 150 billion by 8.8 percent, our CASA increased by 4.5 percent. Where it's mainly coming from is saving deposit increased by 11.3 percent from 13.3 billion to 14.8 billion in 2021. Our loan. To deposit ratio, uh, we improved from 91.5 in 2020 to 90.8 in 2021. Our liquidity coverage ratio, uh, we were at 146.9% in 2020. We closed higher at 155.7% percent, up by 8.8%. Uh, credit costs improved uh, 29 basis points uh, or 0.29%. Uh, this is mainly from lower ECL on loans and, and also higher bad debt recovers, recovered. Our GIL gross impact loan strengthened further uh, to 1.49%, while our uh, loan loss coverage uh, remained well above 100%. If you can see from uh, where we were in 2017, I think across all the uh, uh, across all the factors, I think we have shown improvement. Our impact loan from 3.57 2017 to 2.95. Our impact loan ratio also reduced. Uh, our loan loss coverage also now higher at 122.4 percent from where we start from where we were in in 2017 at 51.2 percent. Fundamental have improved steadily. Uh, this is despite uh, you know the two years of uh, of COVID nineteen pandemic period. Uh, our return on equity ROE improved uh, from seven point seven percent in twenty twenty to nine point six percent in twenty twenty one. Our cost to income ratio cost income ratio improved further from forty seven point one percent to forty five point two percent in twenty twenty one. 
our LLC loan loss coverage also improved, I think higher from 119.7% to 122.4%. Group capital ratios uh, remain strong. I think we are the strongest among our competitors in the market. We were at 18.4 uh, uh, total capital ratio in 2020 to 19.8 in 2021. And also on the CET1 capital ratio, we were at 16.2, uh, uh, we are we close at 17.2 in 2021. The final dividend uh, uh, for for financial year 2021 total dividend of 40 percent per share, 40 cents per share, pardon me, 40 cents per share represents 62.9 percent payout. This is uh, I mentioned earlier the highest ever payout that the group has made. Uh, the board has proposed a final cash dividend of 25 cent per share with 15 cent cash and 10 cent subject to DRP. Uh, together with the inter interim dividend paid, total dividend of 40, per 40 cent per share represents 62.9 percent payout, payout for the year. You can see that our dividend per share over the period of uh, five years, uh, with an exception of uh, 2020, is, is an, an increasing trend. Um, we we were we started in 20, I mean in 2017 we were at a dividend payout of 30.8, and we moved last year uh, we did a dividend payout of 30 34.8, but this year we did 62.9 in 2021. So. A bit of a uh, strategy update. Uh, all of you uh, uh, must be aware that we have a five years uh, strategy uh, plan that we have put uh, forward and shared with, uh, with uh, the shareholders uh, on uh, call Fit 22, uh, fund our journey, invest to win and transform the organization. I mean, some, some of the, the, the notable update that I would like to share with you, I think in terms of uh, funding our journey, uh, we, we said that we want to grow affluent and leveraging on SME customer base. I mean, you can see here that from the AUM of premium customers increased by 7.6% uh, to 42.9 billion. Our affluent fee income also increased by 34% to 211.4 million. And uh, we continue to win in the SME space. Uh, SME loans increased by 11.2%. Uh, SME e solution. This is the uh, uh, e solution that we provided to our SME client through enhanced uh, uh, through our API integration has also increased uh, by 41.3 percent to 13.8 thousand customers. Our uh, large and mid cap uh, both are showing a better traction. Uh, large cap share of wallet in at 45.1 percent uh, from 23.6 percent. Our mid cap penetration rate also increased from 64.6 uh, percent to 72.3 percent. Our uh, in terms of boosting our retail deposit, our deposit increased by 8.1 percent, and and uh, this is to 72.1 billion. This is higher against the industry of 4.9 percent. On the digital space, uh, there's a there's uh, uh, quite a number of uh, products or solutions that we have uh, launched to the market. Our RHB Home apps. Acceptance through apps has increased at 55.8% from 39% uh, the year before. Our SME online financing also increased by 147% to 839 million. Our data analytics brought in incremental benefit uh, of 185 million uh, of revenue. Uh, we are we have modernized uh, in the still process modernizing some part of the IT system and uh, digitalizing some of our customer journey. In terms of transform transforming the organization, uh, you are also aware that we have implemented Agile at Scale at the bank. So pleased to share with you, 11,518 employees are now working on Agile as compared to only 4,000 plus in 2020. And what, what we have seen, what we have observed is also 36% increase in productivity improvement in 2021. And uh, through Agile also, we have uh, came out with uh, 192 minimum viable products and improved uh, NPS score uh, to 15 uh, plus 15 as I alluded earlier. 
A bit of a sustainability update, uh, ESG update. Uh, you know, based on our key key pillars of uh, three three main key pillars of sustainable and responsible banking, embedding good practices and enriching empowering communities. I mean, just to give you a bit of uh, uh, color as to what we have done in terms of our green financing, uh, we said that we are committed to deliver. Uh, uh, green financing commitment of 5 billion by 2025 happy to say that as at december 2021 i think our our what we have extended is 4.32 billion and we have launched a sustainable uh, financing program for sme and retail customers as well i think this is only a period of 3 months we see a tick a take up of 44.36 million uh, for ESG, I think asset management continuously uh, launching their ESG SRI fund. Uh, that is that is very promising. Our AUM now at 836 million as at 31st uh, December 2021. So we announced this. I think we were the one, uh, the first one to do to do the structured uh, ex, uh, struct, uh, green cross currency interest rate swap. Uh, this is this is a transaction set against our ESG links KPI to hedge our 100 million borrowing uh, two years uh, sustainable loan, and uh, I think in terms of ESG risk management, we our position. I think this is uh, uh, one of a uh, question asked as well. Our position on coal activities. Uh, we came up with a statement last year. I think we will not pursue any new opportunities or provide new financing for for new thermal coal mine projects or coal-fired power plant projects. And position on NDPE for agriculture, forestry and palm oil sector, uh, we committed that we will, uh, we will support responsible companies that is aligned with the group NDPE policy. I think in terms of embedding group uh, practice uh, practices, uh, we achieved 41% decrease in our group operational GHG. Uh, in terms of enriching, empowering communities, we invested 9.1 million in community engagement initiative, uh, which benefited more than 2,000 individuals and charitable organisations across Malaysia, Singapore, Cambodia, Laos, and Brunei. And uh, in Cambodia specifically, I think we also have launched uh, GoWave uh, by RHB, which is an online platform to promote financial awareness among the young adults there. Uh, a bit of CSR initiative. I think last two years, uh, the COVID pandemic, uh, so we were, uh, were there, we were involved. I think RHB uh, COVID-19 relief, uh, relief Fund, I think we contributed almost 8.4 million uh, since the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, we also uh, provided medical equipment uh, to selected hospital and donation to the affected families. Uh, for the RHB Emergency and Disaster Relief Fund, I think we contributed 200,000 and pledged to contribute, contribute further up to 1 million. And Emergency and Disaster Relief, I think this is especially last year uh, when there's a, there was a flood incident, we helped 790 million, sorry, 790 families who were affected by the flood across the country. And we continue championing financial uh, uh, literacy uh, through the Money Master program that we have conducted. Financial education series continue, we, we re which recorded more than 112,000 total engagement. And a series of motivational talks on tertiary or education, I think that's also part and parcel of our CSR initiative. And we also organized the SPM Readiness Workshop uh, last year. And other notable uh, program that we have done, I think RHB Excel, Academic Excellence program has benefited more than 4,000 underprivileged students uh, from B40 income statement across 40 schools since 2018. Uh, we contributed 5 million uh, for the Cherdi program, uh, which, where we contributed digital devices to B40 students to support uh, their online lesson. I think this is, very, uh, they, this is very in the need of them during the pandemic period. Uh, we launched, this is, I mentioned earlier, we launched GoWave uh, by RHB in Cambodia. 
Dividend reinvestment plan, uh, just an update. Uh, I think last year we presented on our dividend reinvestment plan. I think for this, this year, I would just like to share with you with the proposed uh, final dividend of 25 cent per share, uh, consisting of cash payout of 15 cent per share and electable portion under the DRP of 10% per share. The timeline uh, for DRP is as follows. I think today we are at the uh, 56th annual general, general meeting, annual general meeting that's for approval. 28, we are going to announce of the fixing of issue, price and entitlement date for the final dividend. 17 May will be the ex-dividend ex date and 18 May entitlement date. Uh, 20 May, we will dispatch of dividend reinvestment uh, plan statement and 7 June expiry date. Uh, 16 June issuance allotment of DRP shares and 17 June is the listing date of the DRP shares. I think in conclusion, um, the group uh, exhibited resilience uh, as it navigated through challenges amid, amid uh, continued uncertainty uh, in the operating environment. Uh, notwithstanding the expectation of the economy recovery I think we at the group will remain prudent and continue to monitor market development closely. Uh, we'll focus uh, on further embedding digital experience. The market landscape has changed as well into customers' lifestyle and business need through the enhancement of holistic digital ecosystem. And the group will remain prudent in managing our asset quality and will continue to enhance our governance and our risk management practices. Again, uh, I would like uh, to share with you, this will not be possible uh, without uh, your continuous support in the board, the management, the, the, uh, the staff, and also shareholders. Uh, we, we thank you. We thank you for your faith and trust in us. I think that's uh, the end of uh, my presentation, Tan Sri. If I may, I think we also have received uh, Question from uh, MSWG. Uh, I would like to take that, uh, Tansri. Thank you so much. Uh, yes. Okay, we receive uh, we receive uh, letters. Uh, we receive letter from Minority Shareholders Watch Group uh, on 19 April. Uh, there's series. Uh, there's number of question. I will uh, try and address all of them uh, here now. Okay, question one is on our FIT22 strategy. Uh, FIT22 will end this year in, uh, for financial year 2022. And uh, the question is what will be the key focus area for RHB Next strategy, uh, group, uh, strategy Roadmap? I think we are, I can, can share with you that we are currently in the process of developing and updating the corporate strat strategy and we'll make the announcement uh, soon. Uh, of our new uh, medium to long-term strategy. And uh, this is maintaining. I think we want to maintain our alignment with our refresh uh, purpose statement. Uh, we don't go uh, away from where our brand promise uh, are. So we are making progress happen for everyone. Okay, what do we see uh, area uh, that we will be focusing? Because we saw a growth in affluent population that seek hyper-personalized uh, experience. I think that's key. We also see an increased demand for Islamic banking services, particular, particularly for the end-to-end -end Islamic offering. Uh, ASEAN re regionalization with a greater integration. I think this is uh, also another area that we'll, we believe that it will signal potential overseas opportunities. And we take, uh, we take note of heavy competition and disruptive technology. As you are aware, I think there's soon to be, there's also digital banking license in Malaysia. And uh, we, we also see high digital expectation. I think coming out of pandemic, uh, there's a lot of expectation on, from banks on uh, serve their customer digitally. And, and also we see involvement in the workforce uh, with different preferences as, as, and needs. Uh, question two, uh, this, is, this is more of uh, one of one of prosperity tax on com companies with uh, chargeable income over 100 million. Obviously, we will be in that category under this tax regime. Uh, the, the tax, the normal tax uh, of 24% will then now, anything above 100 million will now, now be, we are being 
uh, levied with a tax of 33%. So the question is that uh, to what extent this will affect uh, our uh, performance. Uh, for this year, uh, our target ROE is at 10%. Um, that, is, uh, that is after normalising. So if we take on the prosperity tax that we need to pay, so our ROE will come down to 8.5%. So I guess uh, we will continue. I think the, the key area is same. I think we, we mentioned uh, that we will uh, continue be vigilant and grow our asset uh, responsibly. responsibly. Uh, okay. Also, we will maintain our credit discipline. Uh, we expect uh, our credit growth, uh, sorry, our key growth drivers to be mortgage, auto finance, SME and Singapore Steel. And we remain prudent uh, and continue uh, to manage our asset quality and monitor that closely. And of course, we will focus on maintaining robust capital and liquidity position. So in terms of uh, uh, whether, the, whether the group will be able to achieve uh, financial year end 2022 with ROE target of 11.5%, I think this is the FIT 22 initiative. Just would like to share with you, uh, when we developed FIT 22 initiative, uh, we did not foresee uh, the COVID-19 pandemic will affect us. And I think because of that, to answer this question directly, we will not be able to achieve 115 ROE 11.5 was originally set uh, when we first uh, looked at strategy in 2018. So uh, the group performance uh, were largely impacted, especially the last two years. 2020, we were at 7.7% ROE and last year we were at 9.6%. So, but uh, I mentioned earlier, for 2022, our ROE target will be at 8.5% or 10% after normalizing uh, for the prosperity tax impact. Okay, question three, um, a subdued uh, year 2020 uh, gross loan uh, forecast, uh, I mean, sorry, uh, in, in 2020, we have a financing growth of 6.7%, mainly driven by growth, yes. Um, and the question is that, uh, why are we setting a loan growth target at 4 uh, to 5% for 2022? Okay, uh, the asset growth for 2021 was attributed mainly uh, or maybe partly uh, by Pemule uh, repayment assistance, which has resulted in lower portfolio loan repayment. I think this has indi indirectly contributed to the asset growth in 2021. I think based on, on our in-house view, uh, Malaysia GDP is projected to grow by 5.5%. Uh, loan uh, fo loans forecasted to grow by 5.2% in 2020. So despite the expectation of all this economic recovery in 2020, I think we remain cautious given that the potential downside risk arising for geopolitical risk, global inflationary pressures and potential emergence of COVID-19 variant. So having said that, Yes, uh, we put a target of 4 to 5% loan growth, but we will continue to monitor and assess market development and we will we'll assess and we will we'll, uh, revise the loan target uh, in the second half of the year if necessary. Uh, overseas, gross, uh, overseas gross loan uh, increased by 22%. I mean, question what, whether the group expect the foreign market to register similar loan growth momentum in 2022. Our key uh, foreign market drivers for 2022 are still Singapore and Cambodia. So we are optimistic that Singapore and Cambodia will deliver the growth potential. Uh, however, I think we expect loan to uh, continue to expand, perhaps maybe at the uh, lower pace as compared to the year before. And, uh, We'll continue, I think like, like in Singapore, uh, we'll continue to focus on the secured lending and exhibited in our, as exhibited in our uh, 2021 Singapore loans portfolio where 64% of our outstanding loan were secured. And for Cambodia, I think we expect growth momentum to continue. Uh, we are focused and ensuring our asset remain robust given the pandemic challenges that still remain and will pursue growth uh, responsibly. Question 4 on GIL ratio uh, uh, at 1.49% in 2021 compared to 1.7% in 2020. Question is, uh, 
As loan under RA are not classified as impaired, does RHB expect to see uptick in GIL? Uh, answer to that question is that the payment um, uh, moratorium and RA programs help in keeping impact position uh, at bay in 2020 and 2021. However, with the expiry of the deferment repayment assistance uh, under the permulih permule package, uh, the domestic outstanding RA reduced from 12% as at 31st January to 6% as at 31st March. What we foresee, I think we expect a, a bit of uptick uh, in the GIL upon expiry of the RA program. Uh, I mean, just to give you an example, 95% of our bor borrowers who exited RA program has resume, resumed payment. I think that's positive. Uh, as the program also ended in some program ended by December 3rd, 2021, we to manage and mitigate impact of loan servicing capability of our customer will continue to provide assistance to borrowers via internal repayment plan, RNR and referral to AKPK. I think this is um, a continuation if uh, any of our customers still in the need of assistance. Uh, all of this, because of all this, our, we expect GIL to normalise toward pre-pandemic level with a slight better but manageable uptick in for 2022. In in view of this, we expect GR ratio to increase uh, f in 2022, uh, but not more than 1.7%. Okay, I will go to the uh, sub-question. What is the credit cost guidance? Credit cost guidance for 2021, we were at 29, uh, 0.29%, 29 basis point. Uh, 2020, 2020, we're at 58 basis point or 0.58. I think what we have seen, I think we expect credit costs to remain elevated, uh, but lower than 2020, to 2020 level, hovering between 0.3 to 0.35% for 2022. Uh, question five, despite higher income uh, uh, of uh, 905 million in 2021, uh, saw group corporate banking business uh, so uh, deep of 79.4%. Uh, 79 uh, the question is, uh, what is the GIL ratio for the GCB, group corporate banking? Uh, GIL ratio for group corporate banking is around 2.3%, uh, as we were affected by the tourism and le leisure sector, which was directly impacted by the COVID-19 outbreak uh, of the multiple uh, lockdowns. We expect the GIL ratio uh, to maintain uh, or maybe improve slightly in 2020. And we are proactively managing the group corporate banking asset quality by continuing deploying our corporate task force. Question six, uh, community banking mortgage seg segment increase, uh, huge increase from where we were at 37 million in 2020 and, 90, and 937 million in 2021. I mean, you can see that in 2020, uh, right at the beginning of the pandemic, there's less activity. People are not sure as to what they want to do. So, but we saw a really uh, an uptick in 2021. Uh, the increase, I think, uh, of course, attributed uh, partly of our strategy to drive uh, growth in mortgage by expanding geographical uh, through our branches uh, nationwide. I think we push uh, our branches to 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 look on uh, to look at the expanding their asset on the mortgage side, and uh, I think this is uh, also uh, complement our prevailing. Uh, this is also to complement of our prevailing strategy of focusing. Uh, on market centres. And in addition to that, uh, I think you are all aware that the government also supported by giving and by introducing government home ownership campaign which ran until 20, December 2021. We also benefited from digital transformation. 55% uh, of our sales were uh, sales was through the RHB My Home app. Question seven, I think this is more of digital, di digitalization agenda. Uh, we onboarded uh, 300,000 new customers uh, in, on our RHB mobile banking application. But of course, uh, there was uh, also a question, why, why was our, we received low ratings uh, among mobile users uh, at uh, Google Play and also Apple Store? Okay, let me uh, try and explain uh, why was that. Uh, okay, we, I mean, clearly we, place great importance on our customer feedback and we built in into the end and 
end-to-end -end process of designing and developing our digital channels and features. In line with that, I think RHB Mobile Banking and Online Banking uh, provide a rating feature to customer to capture customers' feedback. And, and I think based on the ratings received throughout 2021, 94% of our customers are happy with the, our new mobile banking experience. Uh, 564 users rating 4 and more of uh, out of 5. Additionally, I think based on the recent annual cu customer survey through uh, Ipsos, IPSOS, our mobile banking apps customer satisfac satisfaction score also is at 82% on par with the industry satisfaction. Uh, I think um, what I want to just share with you on the Apple's, uh, Apple Store and Google Play Store, uh, they, the rating was based uh, uh, was based on uh, algorithm uh, that takes into account number of downloads, duration on, on store and some other factors and on top of the user rating. So it's a combination of just user rating experience but it's also in, 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 in their assessment, uh, what they did through the algo is also look at the number of downloads and duration as to how long the, the apps has been on, 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 on the store, in the store. In 2022, we'll continue to improve the feature. I mean, uh, we both a uh, feature of both mobile banking and internet banking uh, by providing improved digital experience for our customers and reducing friction. I think this, this uh, continuously will update, uh, will upgrade and update our mobile banking and internet banking. Question eight, uh, boost holding. Uh, question, uh, should the digital bank uh, joint venture be granted license by BNM. How would JV complement and create synergy? Okay, the application for a joint uh, JV joint venture digital bank uh, should be viewed as an extension of RHB digital transformation plan. Uh, I think we plan to accelerate the deployment of innovative capabilities uh, developed in JV digital bank. It's an example of credit risk management model, servicing model, and etc into the RHB, into RHB to further enhance our competitiveness. Okay, from customer's point of view, we aim uh, for synergies uh, by uh, nurturing underserved and, unders underserved and unserved customers who might eventually become RHB customers. And similarly, we expect the joint venture digital bank to complement our existing business through cross-referral across both banks across both banks with customers seeking more complex product being referred to RHB banking. We look, this, uh, we look to, the, to leverage this joint, uh, joint strength and ecosystem of RHB and Boost Holding and to deliver innovative digital solution to our underserved uh, and unserved customers. We feel that the joint venture digital bank provide a unique proposition because we have our own strength uh, and uh, with, with, uh, if if combining this strength, we believe this is the best of both worlds. We will not go through. I think this is what uh, our strength as compared uh, and both uh, strength that uh, combination. I think we get the best of both worlds. Okay, question nine. I think it's more on sustainability matters. The question uh, was asked: uh, What are the industries projects uh, that RHB extended the green financing to? Uh, okay, we okay. Mentioned earlier, we committed uh, 5 billion and happy to say that we are slightly over 4 billion. Uh, this core activities lending, this is included in the core activities lending, capital market advisory, fundraising, together with investment for a period of 2020 to 2025. The objective was to have a tangible impact directly and indirectly on projects and developments uh, that would uh, counter or address climate change. Okay, summary, if you look at the, in totality, the 4.3 billion that I was mentioned earlier, I think that's mainly coming from sustainable water and water wastewater management, 42.2%, uh, the composition, and followed by green building of 38.3% and re renewable energy of 20.7%. Question 10, uh, the group also launched a, a sustainability finance program uh, for uh, green finance uh, for green financing uh, to retail and SME customers. The question was why uh, the, the take up was only 44.36 uh, million. 
Uh, as uh, this is recently launched, I think within a period of four months, I think I mentioned this earlier, the group has extended to a total of 44.36 million. And uh, these facilities uh, to customers include the hybrid uh, electrical vehicle, electric vehicle financing package offered under auto finance specifically designed for green vehicles, which is well received by our customers. As I said, quarter one 2022, SME banking has a total pipeline of 360 million in sustainable, uh, sustainable financing program. I think this is uh, 44.36 is, is, I would say, is more on the introduction space uh, and it's only the period of four months. So we see the momentum uh, continue. So that's when we have a 360 million uh, in, in our pipeline. Uh, question 11, um, uh, this is more of uh, director's fees. I think the question, uh, question asks, uh, what was the outcome of the review done uh, by the independent external consultant and, and what were the banks and financial institutions benchmarked against? Okay, RHB Banking Group non-executive director's fees were last reviewed more than three years ago. Okay, Willis Tower Watson, uh, we appointed them as an independent external consultant and they have conducted a benchmarking exercise at the end of 2021. And director's remuneration against competitor, comparator major local banks, if we compare with other local, local major banks, including Maybank, Public, CIMB, Mbank, Affin and Alliance Bank. I think that's what the benchmark has been done against. So, and also there's a there's a, also an element of uh, we take into consideration uh, what, what, uh, what, what things has changed. I think the, the, uh, uh, how we look at things, how the board, uh, how, what is the expectation uh, the, uh, when we look at re, uh, remuneration structure. Okay, number one, I think reflective of RHB outlook, uh, we look at uh, macroeconomic event, uh, cost COVID-19, of course, has caused significant market volatility. So board directors must now uh, frame the post-crisis strategy and deliberate about where uh, the focus, the attention. And we recognize unique complexity, requirement and responsibility. Uh, this must be justified appropriately, valued and uh, suitably dis uh, disclosed. I think compensation must pass the strict test of being, of being in the shareholders and relevant stakeholders' interests and per periodically reviewed to avoid uh, obscurity. Uh, benchmark again comparable comparable peers I mentioned think all the we benchmark again all the comparable peers uh, so the benchmark a benchmarking exercise revealed that current fee level for directors are below market median uh, based on the later <coughs> latest data avail available in line with the expected role of the board the commitment time commitment complexity the proposed fee structure has been updated to align with the market and sustain over the near future. With that, uh, Tansri, I think that's the end of the question that we received from MSWG. Okay, we will uh, start. I think these are the questions that we have received uh, earlier. Uh, we will also uh, put it up. Uh, okay, the first question. Okay, give me just one second. The first, the first question. Okay, uh, we received uh, sixteen question, uh, similar question uh, with regards to the dog gift uh, uh, from uh, from our shareholders. Uh, we okay, okay for now. Uh, no, I think the bank will not be providing any dog gift, uh, including e vouchers uh, to shareholders and proxies who participate uh, remotely in this virtual 56th annual general meeting. Uh, this approach um, also taken, into, uh, taken by other conglomerates uh, which moving, uh, moving towards rewarding shareholders more substantively, uh, for an example, uh, via uh, declaration of better dividend. I think we, we have uh, uh, declared, like I mentioned earlier, we declared a uh, better dividend this year. Uh, we also received a question of, uh, uh, on the director's remuneration. I guess this one I've uh, I answered earlier uh, during the MSSG question. Uh, we received a question on, 
publication, all shareholders queries, yes, I think the question raised by shareholders and stakeholders prior and during AGM will be published uh, on RHB website after the meeting. Um, dividend reinvestment uh, form must be sent early to shareholders. It is not used if the shareholders receive the form on the closing date. Uh, this, this question came from uh, Wong Sikai. Thank you for the question. Share Registrar has de dispatched the DRP documents on 8 October 2021, which is at least 14 days uh, before the expiry date on 25 October 2021. This is in accordance with paragraph 6.45C, 6 uh, in bracket 2 of the main market listing requirement. A uh, question from Mr. Lim Tan Yo Kwan. Uh, I think this is again a uh, uh, query to the board uh, share registrars. I think query has is escalated to board boardroom uh, share registrars uh, for further action. A uh, quest. Sorry, I will have to. Let me do. Okay, question. Okay, question on revenue stem. Uh, stem, uh, stem of uh, 10 ringgit uh, should be paid by the company. I remember this was also a question asked last year. I think I would just repeat uh, what uh, our ex-GMD has mentioned earlier under section 4.1, the stem duty uh, of the section, uh, section uh, stem act of 1949, the DRP or EDRP is deemed to be an agreement an instrument uh, chargeable with stamp duty, DRP, EDRP is subjected to uh, a stamp duty of 10 ringgit being an agreement, a notice of election for the shareholders. The stamp duty shall be payable by the shareholders being the person whom first uh, sign, execute the agreement and not or notice of the election. Uh, next question from Ms. Uh, Liu Chin Yip and Chan Kim Hock, uh, will RHB maintain the payout ratio in 2022, hopefully keep the same, give the dividend yield more than 7% a year? Okay, answer to the question is that the, the board, I think on, the, on, 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 on behalf of the board, believe in balancing returns to shareholders uh, with investment to support the future growth. Okay, in 2019, the group revised the dividend policy uh, dividend payout guidance to a minimum of 30% from 20% and 30% previous, previously. Okay, for 2021, the group has proposed to reward our shareholders with a final dividend of 25 cents, uh, together with interim dividend of 15 cents, total dividend of 40 cents, uh, that's payout of 62.9%. Okay, the final dividend will be made under the dividend reinvestment plan, the RP consisting of cash 15 cent and electable, electable portion of 10 cent per share. In future, of course, the, uh, the group intend to continue paying dividend at least 30%. Nevertheless, we strive to achieve payout approximately around 50%, uh, which was the highest, uh, which was the, which was the highest pre-pandemic payout. Uh, question from uh, uh, Loh Moon Siong, the federal government hide the uh, uh, this is US uh, Fed fund rate. Do you see OPR possibility, uh, possibility OPR increase? Uh, we believe that Bangara has always pursued an appropriate and accommodative interest rate policy directed to promoting economic growth. And uh, in this regard, looking at the inflation, we believe that uh, we expect uh, Malaysia economic, uh, economic condition to strengthen this year. Uh, which may lead to BNM. If BNM were to raise rate, I think by 25 basis points in the second half of the year, uh, is, is perhaps maybe to keep the inf inf inflation in check. So that, that's our in-house view. Uh, question from uh, Li Chi Chiang. Uh, how's the outcome for the next performance despite Ukraine crisis? We are finalizing our Q1 2022 result and result will be announced by end of next month, end of May. Uh, at the moment, I believe it's still uh, too early uh, to measure the impact on Ukraine crisis uh, on the good performance. However, as an overall basis, the group will remain uh, vigilant uh, on the outlook uh, the rest of the year. But I think uh, I would just like to share we don't have any exposure to all the related countries. Our key, key target for 2022, uh, I've mentioned earlier, our ROE of 10% uh, if normalised uh, for 
uh, cukai makmur or prosperity tax, uh, loan growth of 4 to 5%, kasa still remain at 30, impact loan below uh, not more than 1.7, cost income ratio not more than 45%. A question from Kao Chan Kai, how was bank sector uh, in overall after recovery? Okay. Uh, economic recovery uh, continues in the positive momentum. I think we have seen, um, however, uh, we have seen that uh, progressively uh, the last, the first quarter, we have seen some, some of the uh, uh, improvement in the economic activities. However, geopolitical crisis, supply chain disruption, global inflation, inflationary pressures and potential emergence of new variant uh, continue to pose downside risks in overall growth outlook. I think overall banking sector is projected to remain resilient with healthy capital and liquidity position. And uh, I think uh, we uh, supported by adequate liquidity level of provisioning that made since the beginning of pandemic. Our loan growth, I think we, we believe it's expected to expand uh, led by the demand from business and consumers and on monetary fund, OPR, this is I mentioned earlier, will ex we expect OPR to increase gradually uh, beginning second half of uh, this year. Uh, blockchain uh, and also NFT relating business, blockchain and all products built on top of blockchain technology such as NFT continue to be emerging technology areas that the industry and market participant continue to observe. We'll observe and monitor this closely. Question from uh, Loh Moon Siong. Uh, how much cost for the AGM, EGM? Because uh, the cost incurred for 55th uh, AGM uh, last year was uh, 95169 to cater, among others, fee uh, to consultant, uh, service providers, the boardroom, share registrars, uh, event and catering. But the cost to conduct this year virtual AGM and EGM is within the same range, approximately as both meetings will be held uh, on the same day, uh, based on the quotation received from the vendors. Next question uh, came from PNB. This is also a set of the question that we have received earlier. Uh, okay, uh, question on directors. I believe uh, what what are the benefit and title under this payment of remuneration, okay, the benefit uh, for clarity, the 2 million allocation intended for the following uh, tech refresh, guess, yeah, tech refresh, DNO, increase uh, fee day training uh, program for new female directors, increase in meeting uh, frequency and establishment of new board committees, especially on the ESG. Question, uh, Remuneration declined 5% year on year. Uh, sorry, uh, the auditor's remuneration uh, for Financial 21 declined 5% uh, year on year on audit uh, work by 70% uh, for non audit work. So, in declined 5% on audit work uh, and uh, by 70% on non audit work. So, the decline in audit remuneration is mainly from cessation of operation in Hong Kong. Uh, change of auditors in Hong Kong as well as change in scope uh, for PIDM validation. The decline in non-audit fee is attributed to the cessation of audit for our RHB Hong Kong Bank Limited, uh, formerly known as RHB Holding Hong Kong Limited and one of investigation related to service in 2020. Next question from PMB, who is RHB uh, current audit partners? Our current, current audit partners is Mr. Ong Ching Chuan of PwC. Uh, the previous audit partner uh, was Mr. Kelvin of PwC and has completed his five-year rotation of audit service. Uh, authority of directors uh, to issue shares on voting guidelines. Uh, the general mandate will enable the directors to take swift action in case uh, there are business opportunities uh, which involve issue of new shares to avoid and to avoid the delay of costs in convening shareholders general meeting to approve such issuance. So the exercise of the above general mandate will only be undertaken if the board considers uh, it to be the best interest of the company. For financial year 2021, the capital position of RHB remains strong. Uh, CET, 
uh, group capital, a uh, common equity tier one capital, and total capital stood at 17.2 and 19.8% respectively. RHB did no, does not uh, foresee any potential need to issue shares in order to satisfy the capital requirement by BNM unless there is a regulatory change uh, of the same. For clarity, this is, there is no plan to issue new shares in the near future. Uh, next question from BNB still. Uh, this is uh, uh, on introduction of FIT22 uh, indicated targets uh, on the, uh, which include top four, top three and top five retail banking. I would uh, just like to share the market condition for retail banking has been particularly uh, challenging in 2020 and 2021. Despite the challenges uh, faced, our FIT22 strategy has led us uh, to, achieve, sorry, uh, to achieve strong growth of 7.7% uh, CAGR in retail loan, uh, 2021 at 99.7 billion, 2017 at 76.2 uh, billion, uh, and 11% CAGR in retail deposit. Uh, we plan to continue uh, working towards uh, FIT22 aspiration to be top uh, four retail bank in Malaysia. Uh, I think uh, part of the strategy, which, which include uh, continuously leveraging on technology, digitalization, uh, enhance our product proposition and service level uh, with a clear segment focused view and as we look uh, to personalize our offering to each sector, uh, customer segment. We also uh, will be introducing a new strategy uh, for medium to long term growth uh, as part of RHB growth, RHB Group new corporate strategy will be announced later. Uh, question positioning again, I think, uh, let me see, I think a large uh, stride has been made in SME banking uh, uh, since its launch FIT22. Our FIT22 strategy has led us to achieve faster than industry growth uh, of 8.3% CAGR in SME and 10.1% uh, CAGR in SME deposit. So both on the asset and liability side, we are growing as per what we plan. Uh, this put us in a strong position uh, for future growth uh, as, as we leverage on SME ecosystem as a key differentiator. I think we, this will continue. We will continue building the momentum and continue working towards uh, being a top three SME bank in Malaysia. Um, Okay, next question on uh, introduction. Okay, next question is uh, mentioned that RUB Insurance was the 11th largest insurer in, in Malaysia. Is the target to be top five relevant? Okay, uh, group insurance has faced several challenges uh, since 2017, just to share with uh, shareholders, PNB and, and the rest. I think growing a sustainable business with a healthier portfolio mix under the, f under the face liberalization of moto and fire, ta fire tariff, uh, which has led to the current market increasing in competitiveness. I think the plan to leverage on digital technology and digital ecosystem has not brought in significant premium. Nevertheless, 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 this is a step in the right direction. Direction. Our target to be top seven general insurer in Malaysia by 2026 in terms of uh, gross return premium. We have set our uh, set out to achieve by focusing on three areas: widening agency distribution, deepening our effort uh, effort on cross selling uh, through banka, uh, banka bank assurance innovating to enhance product with a focus segment needs uh, through our Agile uh, Leap. Uh, question, uh, what was the benchmarking? I think sustainability. Uh, okay, the question is that the group uh, five-year sustainability agenda strategy was developed based on review of Malaysia commitment towards transitioning to a low carbon economy and in consultation with regulatory uh, authorities uh, as well as taking into consideration investors increased uh, focus on ESG investing. Benchmarking that support that supported this new uh, five-year plan uh, was, uh, was the group sustainability journey and key achievement as at December 2021, local and regional peers as well as several international financial institutions. Aspiration under the new strategy, uh, what are the key countries, uh, what, uh, what are indicative amount of investment. The group will uh, work 
uh, with the stakeholders across ASEAN, uh, where RHB has a presence. Uh, the key countries targeted uh, for the time being will still be Malaysia, La Singapore, Laos and Cambodia. The targeted investment amount for this aspiration is, is uh, 4.6 million annually. A uh, question on GHG emission and uh, strategy on including purchasing carbon, uh, carbon off offset. We, uh, the plan and measures uh, that RHB have put in place to achieve carbon neutral uh, operation consists of upgrade and installation of new technologies such as higher efficiency, efficiency, efficiency chillers and uh, corresponding VSD pumps. Uh, capacitor banks, uh, LED lights, and renewable energy solution uh, solar panel. RHB is currently exploring uh, carbon offset, uh, carbon, carbon offset uh, options. However, the group will strive to deliver a substantive uh, reduction through optimization and improvement of our internal operation and practices. Um, Question on for existing loan, can you share, is this is all more on ESG, existing loan, can you share with the current uh, account, uh, current amount of loan? Uh, the ESG sens sensitive sectors that has uh, not, okay, the, the ESG sensitive sector that has not, uh, that has not com uh, compiled, complied, that has not complied uh, with the ESG criteria outlined in our ERA risk assessment tool stood at 75 million as at 31st March 2021, which is 0.5% of the group total ESG sensitive uh, sectors portfolio. So what I'm saying is that, what we are saying here is that uh, non-compliance of ESG constitute about only 0.5% of the total ESG sensitive uh, sectors. Okay, uh, credit costs, uh, guidance, I think I've mentioned that earlier, uh, I can skip this. Uh, Singapore operation, Singapore exposure on uh, uh, oil and gas sector was around 10.2%, that was in, to, in 2016. I think for 2021, the exposure to this sector reduced to 3.3%. Uh, Currently, focus in Singapore is mainly, uh, this is what I've mentioned earlier, on secured lending. Uh, as at uh, December uh, 2021, loan portfolio, 64% outstanding loan were secured. 31% uh, outstanding loan were from real estate sector. Overall, group exposure to oil and gas sector has reduced uh, from 3.9% in 2016 to 1.9% in 2021. Uh, Non-fund based income, I think uh, this I uh, take you guys through as to why was the non-fund based income reduced by 7.6%. I can skip that. Uh, has RHB identified candidate? Oh, okay. Yeah, to replace me, I guess uh, uh, replace uh, Chip Rashi as a, so the hiring of head, uh, the hiring of head of a group of banking is in progress. We will assess uh, internal and external, and we'll make the announcement uh, soon. With that, uh, Tan Sri Chairman, I think that's the end of all the questions that we have received earlier. Um, so uh, from MSWG, PMB, and also some of the shareholders who have submitted the question earlier. Thank you so much. Well, uh, thank you, uh, Chair Rashid, and thank you for all the questions. And uh, if there are certain questions which have yet to be answered, we will respond later. So with that, the question and answer session is now closed. Yeah, so, sorry, Yang Pagi Tan Sri. I think there's also, live I was told there's also live question. Uh, maybe we should uh, put it up. Uh, some of this, this is just a question that we received throughout uh, the AGM today. Uh, the first question by Ms. Uh, Li Chi Chiang. Uh, just wondering how is the forecast of next uh, quarter profit? I mentioned uh, earlier, I think, um, uh, with uh, ROE target of 10 uh, percent, uh, 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 normalizing after the the Chukai Makmo uh, of uh, or 8.5 percent ROE uh, reported ROE. Next question is: um, uh, 
कि फ्रॉम कोली शी लोकल बैंकिंग बिजनेस आर गेटिंग बेटर आफ्टर पेंडेमिक एनी मेगा प्रोजेक्ट और एस एम ई एंड न्यू प्लानिंग फॉर न्यू लैंडिंग बोर्विंग फाइनेंशियल एस स्मॉल फंड के आई थिंक गवर्नमेंट आई थिंक बेस्ड ऑन बेस्ड ऑन दैट लाइक लाइक आई ओल्सो हैव मैंशन एल the 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 fight, we work very closely with the regulators uh, to see uh, if there's any progress and need of of uh, special financing uh, and internally as well i think we are looking at various product that suits the expectation and the needs of our customers okay we can go to government uh, okay sorry again can rhb increase can rhb increase uh, can i sorry uh, can can rb increase of revenue but reduce costing in overall business operation i think we continuously looking for opportunity to improve our revenue uh, and optimize our cost base uh, our cost base by uh, various avenues i think processing uh, reengineering is one of them uh, robotic process automation is also one of them and restructuring our our organizational structure through our agile program and improvement process uh, improvement uh, procurement process as well and i think as uh, for our branch network uh, we think that uh, our customers will still need a uh, branch i guess that is also one of our uh, foc focus uh, this year because we believe that that's another touch point that the customers uh, will still want uh but uh the nature of the branch will need to be changed i think we believe that uh the branch uh 10 years ago uh, and now would be different I think the the expectation and the need uh, of the uh customers would be will be different so we will focus uh, uh, uh we will continue to optimize our branch uh, footprint uh, footprint and remodel our branches to meet uh, customer demand okay question from uh, same uh Uh, Koalishi, okay. In the past, in the past few years, uh, financial uh, uh, in the past few years and financial years, are uh, closing pull out Hong Kong. I think uh, this is talking about Hong Kong businesses. RHB, IB Hong Kong, uh, didn't have a the scale or size of uh, to be relevant uh, in a very crowded and competitive uh, environment, especially in Hong Kong market. Hence, the closure of Hong Kong reduced the. the bleed reduce the losses the cost that we incurred uh, uh for the group asean uh will still be the focus for rhb and we committed to uh we committed to our operation in this in the region and growth uh, the business uh, in in asean okay question uh, from still same uh, koalishi uh, how was the business partner planning with the government projects uh, project project support like loan and financing to company and corporate doing subcontractor in mega project i think this is a uh, uh, rate that uh, rate they doing uh, cloud funding okay cloud funding and indirectly uh, cloud uh, round funding uh, are competitive okay depends uh, depends if there is a, a binding contract uh, for a reputable and sound awarder uh that that's that's number one key that we will normally look at and in addition to that um uh, the condition i think we look at the tight condition and can be structured to ring fence i think this is all, all to mitigate some of the risk uh the tight condition can be structured to ring fence the the contract uh, proceed hence if uh, on that basis uh we will look at it okay a uh, question from uh, teh pengtin Uh, may I know when the company going to reward shareholders with bonus issue? I think we ma I mentioned this earlier. We do not have immediate plan for bonus issue at this moment. We are still committed to provide return to shareholders via dividend route, uh, whereby we have established dividend reinvestment plan. Uh, next question from Koalishi: How was the digital license and virtual uh, licensing uh, leasing project? uh does arrange be able uh, doing corporate loan as the theory technically similar i think we are waiting bnm announcement i think from the uh, of the uh, digital banking license winners uh uh the digital bank uh, that that arrange be plan to jv with aziata 
uh, aim to focus on serving micro SMEs. So it's a totally uh, different target segment of market uh, because, because at the end of the day, digital bank, we're talking about the underserved and, and unserved customers of the uh, financial institution. Uh, what, uh, what is the outlook uh, of RHB uh, uh, for the next uh, three years? Uh, looking ahead, I think we expect uh, financial service sector to continue to evolve rapidly. I think um, we we in part of acceleration of market trends as a result of COVID-19. Uh, market start picking up. We can see that. I think we uh, this one I've mentioned uh, how we want to plan to grow in the next ten uh, next three years. So the next question is: uh, Can RHB uh, doing more benefit to warga mas? Okay, our branches do give priority. Uh, to senior uh, citizen, we also have our EQMS system, uh, system to allow appointment to pre-arrange uh, your visit to uh, to the branch. I think if you are, uh, if some of you are not aware, uh, please. Uh, I mean, at, at our at, at at all of our branches, we ha we have started with this EQMS system. So, question by Koalishi again. I think the marketing are doing new target customers. Uh, they're sorting customers based, not just AI, okay. Question is, are customers signed to know this close to uh, promotion and personal? Okay, RHB practice, practices strict guidelines in line with PDPA. I think that one given, I think all financial institutions are governed by that. To ensure customer confid confidentiality and preferences are adhered to. So we uh, consistently carry our training seminars and our popular money chat. I think some of you may have uh, viewed that webinars for our customers to ensure we share the latest uh, practices uh, and market uh, condition. This will allow allow our customers to make informed decision. Okay, next question uh, from Lee Moon. How? Uh, uh, as the responsible, responsible banking, may I know whether the bank will lodge police report if found any of the account? Okay. If upon conducting due diligence uh, at any point of uh, at the point of onboarding, the bank finds that the potential uh, customer is if, is involved in illegal businesses, uh, or the bank has concern on potential customers' uh, conduct of the business. I think the bank will not proceed uh, on onboarding such customers. And um, as required by the regulators, uh, report to the relevant regulators of the application of the potential uh, uh, customer will be made. Okay, question from uh, Chua uh, Song Yin. Chua Song Yin uh, should improve customer service at the branch. Um, we, we take note of that. I think we are. Uh, Perhaps any inconvenience, inconveniences uh, shareholders or customers has uh, faced earlier, I think we apologize for that. Uh, today we uh, practice a hybrid model. We will entertain uh, both a walk-in and also those on digital appointment, EQMS that I mentioned earlier. Priori priority, of course, will be given to those on digital uh, appointment, but those uh, who walk in will still be served uh, and time to serve uh, advice to them. I think we will let them know uh, when uh, we are going to serve them. But trust me, I think uh, we will uh, look at improving, uh, further improving uh, the way we serve our customers moving forward. Question from uh, Lu Yo Ming uh, in response to increased director's fees. I believe um, can shareholder expect double profit? Okay, it's a tall order. I, I think we will work hard on that, uh, shareholders. We'll work uh, hard and see uh, uh, how, f uh, how best. I mean, of course, we, have, we, have, uh, we are planning to come up with our medium to long-term strategy. Uh, so, yes, so the board will continue to exercise its duty diligently and responsibly uh, to steer uh, the group operation forward. I mean, of course, with the support, with the board guidance, with the, senior manage uh, with the management and all European <coughs> Uh, coming in together, uh, of course. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, that that's the that's the intention to to pay to give back to the to the community and to give back to the uh, stakeholders, all stakeholders. Question from Kao Li Shi: The overall financial year business in banking is is uh, is growth. What is the ratio of personal banking? Okay, assuming 
uh, this is related okay i i'm just assuming this is uh, related to as retail sme ratio overall to the to the uh, ratio to the overall uh, overall okay overall uh, okay i okay let me see whether okay uh, question let me bring to the next question chua song chua song yun our bank has reported a net modification loss of 418, I think for 20, yeah, uh, I think I've shared that earlier. Uh, why are these amounts seem to be significantly higher than other bank? The group, uh, I must say that the group has, has been accommodative in helping our customers with moratorium and RNR. So I think this is why our modification loss is higher. So I think uh, this is this is uh, in relation to consequential to we provide more assistance as compared to some of our competitors. Question from Lim uh, Jintin. Uh, morning. Recently, the finance minister has announced rescue plan for Sapura Energy, five banks. Um, unfortunately, we are unable to disclose customer profile uh, as we are bound by customer confidentiality. Uh, provision but rest assured i think our our policy remain remain prudent in terms of provisioning and in terms of our asset quality question from chu himpo uh, i note that the company currently has it place uh, is in place a cash deferred scheme okay to reward okay we believe that the proposed share grant scheme i think this in relation to the share grant scheme will be better aligns our senior management performance and reward uh, with shareholders return i think that that's that's the in the the main intention of why we're moving for cash deferred uh, scheme to the uh, share grant scheme this will in turn uh, better serve the shareholders long-term objective any dilution impact to the shareholders of other shareholders is expected to be minimal we'll run through the detail of uh, the projected impact uh, in in our EGM uh, late after this. So for clarity, a non-executive director do not receive the share grant scheme. On a question from Tan Siak Fa, uh, please tell us what makes you deserve the allowance increase, how you benchmark. Okay, the allowance uh, the allowance increase is to align uh, to the market and reflect the complexi complexities and responsibilities of the directors in line with market challenges and expectation. The benchmarking process, I think we have conducted that uh, by independent party, uh, Willis Tower Watson. And we, I mean, I mentioned this earlier, uh, we compared ourselves uh, with all the lo major local banks, Maybank, Public, CIMB, Mbank, uh, Affin and uh, Alliance. And this is where the result, where we saw that our RHB current fee level uh, for the directors are below market median. Uh, Lim, a uh, question from Lee uh, Mun, Mun Hao. Uh, why physical, when physical, okay, uh, God willing, inshallah, I think uh, uh, we are also guided uh, by uh, what's happening, uh, what's uh, the progress of, of uh, the situation. Uh, if, if, if things go well, so I believe that uh, next year uh, we will uh, do this physically. Uh, question from uh, Beh Siang, Siang Yin. In terms of foreign branches, what are the plans uh, on adding more branches or expansion? We do not have any immediate plans uh, to increase the number of branches uh, in overseas operation. We, uh, we however, actively looking in, into investing uh, in an, enhancing our IT technology. Uh, and digital platform so that we can better serve our customers and enhance our reach uh, to the target segment. Question from uh, Sharifa Farah Hamin uh, Mahmoud. Please explain what is the impact of digital bank uh, permit with uh, a license with uh, Aziata? Okay, we are waiting for a Bangara announcement. Um, the, the digital banking uh, Working with uh, Boost or Aziata uh, plans to prim primarily focus uh, on serving the micro SME and B40 retail customers. Um, I think which is market that RHB has little present uh, at the moment. The group also uh, of uh, so-called underserved uh, customers will complement uh, RHB customer base uh, in totality. Uh, the digital bank will uh, refer more uh, higher value products. So we believe that I think there's also uh, 
uh, counter referral uh, if there's any any big uh, large uh, amount of uh, uh, asset and liability requires by any customers that could also be cross referral to the bank i think that's also one of the one of the uh, impact that could happen with the establishment of digital banking license um, okay we we question by uh, bi uh, siang yin how do you rate the company performance uh, in meeting uh, fit 22 strategy okay Fit22 strategy has driven consistent improvement, uh, particularly to market share, uh, cost income ratio and ROE. Uh, this is despite the challenges that we face uh, uh, due to COVID-19 in the last two years. I think improvement in the 2021 ROE normalized at 10.3 versus 8.7 and that is a testament to that. Consistent uh, cost income reduction to 45.2. Uh, PBT increased by 37.9. Uh, it's also a testament to that. And higher returns to shareholders over three years period under the financial sector, uh, financial service sector category. I think we we are we are named the highest return, uh, highest return to shareholders over over the three years period. I think we are also in the process of refining our mid to long term corporate strategy. I think the new corporate strategy will respond to market trends because market is uh, very uh, fluid, uh, ever-changing. Uh, so I think we need to adapt to the current market environment in doing our coming out, our, our plan. So I think an example of uh, this market trend, I think I've mentioned this earlier. A uh, question from, next question is coming from Ko Li Shi. Uh, Ko Li Shi, how was the RHB uh, group doing in house training? Okay, RHB delivers house training through RHB Academy. We have our own RHB Academy. We also send our staff uh, for external training. Our program facilitators work with subject matter experts, um, both internal and also external, uh, to ensure relevant training is deployed and delivered. During pandemic, uh, unfortunately, most of the program uh, were delivered through an online platform. Uh, CR, CR, CSR-based program also was carried out uh, to the school student and the underprivileged community. I think we, uh, the staff, we look at the staff and train them and we also look at our uh, community uh, in general, our customers also included. Question from Lee Swan B. Uh, would the board kindly consider to waive off stamp duty? I guess uh, I've mentioned this. This is by law. I think we need to pay uh, 10 ringgit. It's not much. So, uh, question from Ko Li Shi, uh, ESG, work-life balance, quality life of employment, uh, and more efficiency uh, from worker perform, from worker, okay. Does RHB group apply the statement uh, made by other country in Japan? Okay, the social, uh, the, the social media are viral of banking employment no longer from eight to five, right? I think uh, uh, in overall, uh, Okay, this, uh, this, okay, the question is the multitask apply, if the multitask, I mean, I, I, I take it as the question is coming, whether we apply the same principle. I think RHB put a lot of emphasis on employee well-being. I think that that's key. Uh, various, in, various many initiatives such as RHB wellness program, uh, hybrid and flexible working arrangement, we do provide that. that various employee engagement program to ensure our employee well-being is being taken care of. Question from Te Hui Ling. Um, uh, again, uh, very poor job in calculating interest. I think uh, if, if uh, such a situation uh, occurs, uh, I, uh, on behalf of the bank, apologize uh, for the inconvenience. Uh, cost. Uh, we would have to handle this on case uh, by case basis. Please do do reach out to us uh, at our customer advocacy at RHB Group. The email address or call us. I think call uh, go to our branch. Uh, call or uh, any of us uh, to get help. Uh, call our call center. I'm sure uh, we are. We will be there uh, assisting you. Okay. Um, question from. Uh, uh, there are questions from Te Wei, Hui, Wei Ling. Uh, why are there so many types of trading platform in RHB? There are two main uh, trading platform uh, in, in RHB, uh, which is 
platform post the merger with OSK. We plan to consolidate this platform. Uh, give us a bit more time. I think we will cons consolidate this in the next two, three years. And the other, the other tra uh, trading platform are futures, derivative of uh, and commodities. They are uh, different platform. I, is there any more question? I don't see any question coming, uh, Tan Sri. Okay, that's all. Uh, question that we have received, a uh, live question that we have received from uh, our shareholders. Thanks again for the question. I'm now passing back the floor to Yang Berbagi Tan Sri Chairman. Thank you, Encik uh, Rashid. Thank you for all the questions. And if there are certain questions which have yet to be answered, we will respond later. So with that, the question and answer session is now closed. I will now proceed with the agenda at hand. Agenda one on the first item is to receive the audited financial statement of the company for the financial year ended 31st December 2021 together with the director's and auditor's report thereon. Ladies and gentlemen, the audited financial statement together with the director's and auditor's report thereon for the financial year ended 31 December 2021 have accordingly been issued to you together with notice convening this AGM. I presume that you have had the opportunity to peruse through the respective report. And in accordance with the section 340, subsection 1, subsection A of the Companies Act 2016, the audited financial statement together with the directors and auditors report are now laid before the meeting for discussion. As the formal approval of the members is not required for this agenda item, the matter is not put forward for voting. I wish to put on record that the audited financial statement of the company has been duly received by the shareholders and proxies and we shall proceed to ordinary resolution one. Agenda two, ordinary resolution one. The next item on the agenda is on the approval of a single tier final dividend of 25 cents per share in respect of the financial year ended 31st December 2021 under Ordinary Resolution 1. We will now move to the Agenda 3, Subsection 1, which is the Ordinary Resolution 2, on the re-election of directors pursuant to Clause 94 of the Company's Constitution. Pursuant to Clause 94 of the Company's Constitution, one third of directors shall retire every year and are eligible for re-election. Accordingly, Tan Sri Dr. Rebecca Star Maria shall retire pursuant to Clause 94 of the company's constitution and being eligible, has offered herself for re-election under Ordinary Resolution 2. We will now proceed to Ordinary Resolution 3, which is also on the re-election of directors pursuant to Clause 94 of the company's constitution. Mr. Lim Chen Teck shall likewise retire pursuant to Clause 94 of the company constitution and being eligible, has offered himself for re-election under Ordinary Resolution 3. The following item on the agenda is on the re-election of directors pursuant to Clause 94 of the company's constitution. Puan Sharif Fatul Laila Said Ali shall retire pursuant to Clause 94 of the company's constitution and being eligible, has offered herself for re-election under Ordinary Resolution 4. Ladies and gentlemen, Ordinary Resolution 5 is in relation to the approval for the increase of director's fee and board committee's allowances to the non-executive director from the 56 AGM of the company do to the 57 EGM of the company. The director nomination for the non-executive directors was last reviewed and approved at the 52nd EGM of the company held on 25th April 2018. As part of a period, periodical review to ensure that the companies remain competitive against its peers and with the heightened responsibility and account accountability 
required for directors as per the prevailing requirement under the Companies Act 2016, the Financial Services Act 2013, the Capital Market and Services Act 2007, the Market Main Listing Requirement and the Malaysian Code of Corporate Governance and External Consultant Willis Tower Watson was engaged in late 2021 to undertake the benchmarking analysis and recommend the appropriate remuneration for the non-executive directors taking into account the demand, complexities and performance of the company as well as the skill and experience required. The proposed remuneration review was comprehensively deliberated by the Board Nominating and Remuneration Committee and was duly approved by the Board of, Com by the Board of Company in December 2021 for tabling at the 56 AGM for the shareholders to approve under Ordinary Resolution 5 and 6 respectively. Ordinary Resolution 6 is on relation to the payment of director's remuneration, excluding director's fees and board committee's allowance, to the non-executive director for the period from 56 AGM to the 57 AGM of the company. The remuneration referred to under this resolution included, among other meetings, among others, meeting attendance allowances, farewell port scheme, the director's liability insurance coverage, electronic devices, and technology peripheral for use during meetings. In determining the estimated total amount of remuneration, excluding director's fees and board committee's allowances for the non-executive directors, the board consider very factor, particularly the numbers of meetings, schedule and unscheduled, for the board and board committees, as well as the numbers of non-executive directors involved in this meeting, which form a major part thereof. We shall now proceed with the next item, the agenda of today's meeting, which is Ordinary Resolution 7, on the reappointment of Mrs. Price Waterhouse Cooper PLT as auditors of the company to hold office until the conclusion of the next 57 AGM of the companies at a remuneration to be determined by the directors. The Board Audit Committee, at its meeting held on 31st January 2022, conducted its annual assessment on the external auditors of the company, Mrs. PricewaterhouseCoopers, in accordance with the Bank Negara guideline on external auditors. The, the assessment covered the wide spectrum of matters such as performance, suitability, independence, and objectivity of the external auditors based on the qualifying criteria for the appointment of auditors and term of audit engagement. Having satisfied itself with the, the performance and fulfillment of criteria as set out in the Bank Negara guideline on external auditors, the BAC recommended the reappointment of Mrs. PricewaterhouseCoopers as the external auditor of the company for the financial year ending 31 December 2022. The board at its meeting on 26 January 2022 approved the recommendation for the shareholders' approval to be sought at the 56 AGM of the company on the reappointment of the Mrs. PricewaterhouseCoopers under Ordinary Resolution 7. Ladies and gentlemen, our retiring auditor, PwC, have expressed their willingness to continue office as auditors of the company. The board is also seeking the shareholders' approval to authorize the directors to fix the remuneration of the external auditor for the financial year ending 31 December 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, Ordinary Resolution 8 is to renew the general mandate to the director of the company to issue ordinary shares of the company from time to time pursuant to Section 75 and 76 of the Companies Act 2016. The resolution, if passed, will give power to the directors of the company to issue ordinary shares in the capital of the company provided that the aggregate numbers of shares issued pursuant to this resolution 
does not exceed 10% of the total number of share of the company for the time being, or what we call a general mandate, without having to convince a general meeting. The general mandate, unless revoked or varied at the general meeting, will expire at the conclusion of the next AGM of the company. The general mandate will enable the director to take swift action in case of inter alia a need for a corporate exercise or in the event that business opportunity or other circumstances arise which involve the issue of new shares and to avoid delay and cost in convening of general meeting to approve such issue of shares. We now proceed to the next item of the agenda, that is the allotment and issuance of new ordinary shares in the companies pursuant to the dividend reimbursement uh, plan. The proposed ordinary resolution 9, if passed, will give authority to the directors to allot and issue new RHB bank shares pursuant to the dividend reimbursement plan in respect of dividend declared after this AGM and such authority shall aspire at the conclusion of the next AGM of the company. Ladies and gentlemen, an addendum to this notice of AGM was issued on 5th April of 2022 in respect of Ordinary Resolution 10, which is in relation to the re-election of Inche Muhammad Rashid Muhammad, who retires by rotation pursuant to Clause 98 of the company's constitution and who, being eligible, offer himself for re-election. Inche Muhammad Rashid was appointed onto the board of RHB Bank on 1st April 2022 upon the approval being obtained from Bank Negara Malaysia. In Chief Muhammad Rashid, director's profile has been included in the aforementioned addendum for the shareholders' reference and along with his credential, academic and professional qualification, it was highlighted that In Chief Muhammad Rashid does not have family relationship with any of the directors and or major shareholders of the RHB Bank. He has not been convicted of any offence within the past five years and has not been imposed any public sanction or penalty by the relevant regulatory authority. Further, he does not have any conflict, conflict of interest with Rashid B Bank and does not hold any shares of the bank. Ladies and gentlemen, we have dealt with all the items on the agenda. So, Inti Azman, are there any other matters for consideration at this meeting? Uh, no, Tansri, we did not receive any notice of any other business to transact at this meeting. Tansri. Thank you, uh, Inti Azman. Ladies and gentlemen, as all resolutions have been tabled and there is no other business to be transacted at this meeting, we shall proceed with the conclusion of the voting session. Please cast your vote before the pool is closed in 10 minutes' time. For the benefit of the members, I wish to inform that I have been appointed to act as a proxy for numbers of members and I shall vote in accordance with the instruction given. Ladies and gentlemen, we shall now close the poll voting. Message KPMG PLST, our scrutinists, will now verify the full result and validate their report. An estimated time period of about 15 minutes is reserved for this purpose. Ladies and gentlemen, the scrutinists have verified the full result and validated their report. For ordinary resolution 1, approval of single tier final dividend, 99.999% have voted in favour of the resolution and 0.001% have voted against the resolution. 0% does no abstain from the voting. Consequently, ladies and gentlemen, I declare ordinary resolution 1 carried. For ordinary resolution 2, re-election of Yang Babagia Tansri, Dr. Rebecca Stamaria as the director of the company, 
99.5521% have voted in favor of the resolution and 0.4479% have voted against the resolution. Consequently, ladies and gentlemen, I declare ordinary resolution to carry. For ordinary resolution three, re-election of Mr. Lim Cheng Teck as director of the company, 99.8811% have voted in favor of the resolution and 0.1189% have voted against the resolution. Consequently, ladies and gentlemen, I declare ordinary resolution three carried. For ordinary resolution four, re-election of Fon Sharifatul Laila Said Ali as director of the company, 99.8776% have voted in favor of the resolution and 0.1224% have voted against the resolution. Consequently, ladies and gentlemen, I declare ordinary resolution for carried. For ordinary resolution 5, increase of director's fees and board com committee allowances and further to improve the payment of the same to the non-executive director for the period from 56 AGM to the 57 AGM that the company, 99.9581% have voted in favor of the resolution and 0.0419% have voted against the resolution. Consequently, ladies and gentlemen, I declare ordinary resolution 5 carried. For ordinary resolution 6, payment of director's remuneration of an amount of up to 2 million to the non-executive directors for the period from the 56 AGM to the 57 AGM of the company, 99.9535 have voted in favor of the resolution and 0.0465% have voted against the resolution. Consequently, ladies and gentlemen, I declare Ordinary Resolution 6 carried. For Ordinary Resolution 7, the reappointment of PwC as auditors of the company, 99.7256% have voted in favor of the resolution and 0.2744% have voted against the resolution. Consequently, ladies and gentlemen, I declare Ordinary Resolution 7 carried. For Ordinary Resolution 8, authority for directors to issue and allot shares, 87.8889% have voted in favor of the resolution and 12.1111% have voted against the resolution. Consequently, ladies and gentlemen, I declare Ordinary Resolution 8 carried. For Ordinary Resolution 9, allotment and issuance of new ordinary shares in the companies pursuant to the dividend reinvestment plan, 99.9287% have voted in favor of the resolution and 0.0713% have voted against the resolution. Consequently, ladies and gentlemen, I declare Ordinary Resolution 9 carried. For Ordinary Resolution 10, the election of Inche Muhammad Rashid Muhammad as director of the companies, 98.8223% have voted in favor of the resolution and 0.1777% have voted against the resolution. Consequently, ladies and gentlemen, I declare Ordinary Resolution 10 carried. Ladies and gentlemen, as there is no other business to be transacted at the CGM, I now declare the meeting closed. Thank you very much for your support and participation. Stay safe, stay healthy until we meet again. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat Hari Raya Aidilfitri. Uh, with your permission, Chairman. Uh, dear shareholders, kindly log off from the EGM link and join the link for the EGM that you receive to attend the EGM. Uh, even though the URL is the same, but I believe that there's a dif different protocol. So you will need to log, log off and log in again for the EGM. Thank you, Tansri.
And uh, the shareholders may I request a break of 50 minutes before we start with the AGM.